Virgo Risings October 2022 is a big month of securing the bag and working on your finances and then major overhauling your routine for how you support your day to day life. If you're excited to see what's coming up for you this October 2022, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm an astrologer, and in this video, I'm using the tropical zodiac within whole sign houses as I practice mainly Hellenistic Greek astrology. So in the background this entire month, Saturn in your sixth house is squaring Uranus in your ninth house, showing that diligence or getting on top of your health and being really mature about the way that you deal with coworkers is difficult because of sudden chaos or instability in your day-to-day -day education, like if you're at school, or being up in the air about your travel plans and what your long-term living situation will be. Then from the first to the third, Mercury in your first house is opposing Neptune in your seventh house. As someone with your chart, or sorry, your ascendant, ruled by Mercury. This whole month of Mercury transits is really pivotal and you might find a lot of back and forth and perspectives because of Mercury doing so many things. But we start out the month with the first to the third. Mercury in your first house of self opposing Neptune in your seventh house of others. So someone else might be deluding you and making it very difficult to communicate because they're being dishonest or misleading, especially a one-on-one -on -one very close partner such as a best friend or someone you're married to. But also on the first, Venus in your second house is opposing Jupiter in your eighth house. Venus and Jupiter, the cute ship planets, and your second and eighth houses of finance, it shows that you are opening them up on an extremely strong financial note of probably making a lot of money or getting an opportunity to do so. Then on the second, Mercury is stationed direct in your Virgo first house. So luckily, as like I said, having someone with Virgo placements, at least just a rising sign, if not more, Mercury retrogrades can really fuck shit up. And now Mercury being direct, you are um, moving forward, you're finding more clarity and communication, you're able to be more assertive and direct, and you are finding life in general to be much, much easier. So that's really lovely from the second onward. And on the sixth to the seventh, Mercury in your first house is trining Pluto in your fifth house. So you're being really direct and communicating with a romantic partner or about a creative project as well. And on the ninth, there is a full moon in your Aries eighth house, a letting go, a celebration, or a high point around shared finances in your life that are looking really positive. So it looks like you're celebrating, maybe making some money, maybe throwing a party. It looks very, very lucrative for you in the beginning of this month. And from the 9th to the 15th, Mars in your 10th house is scoring Neptune in your 7th house, showing that on a more difficult note, some aggression or conflict or things you're having to really work for in your career are met with dishonesty or lack of clarity from a one-on-one -on -one partner. Like you're struggling getting things done in your career because your partner is being dishonest or misleading and really confusing you. Um, but on the 11th, a lot of things start moving into your second house or just happening there. So Mercury enters your second house of finances. There's more talk and more movement around money. From the 11th to the 14th, the Sun and Venus there are trining Saturn in your sixth house. Looks like people that work for you are really supporting you financially and helping you. And from the 17th to the 19th, the Sun and Venus are trining Mars in your 10th house. Looks like your boss or your job is really supporting you financially. And from the 19th to the 26th, the Sun is next to Venus. It's conjunct in your second house. And then it moves into your uh, third house as well. So there's a lot of really beautiful, lucrative, uh, like growth energy going on financially and then with your routine. However, during the 19th to the 20th, the Sun Sun and Venus are squaring Pluto in your fifth house, showing that you could feel like you're being manipulated or in a power struggle with a partner or with a creative project that you could be working with someone else on just during those days. And on the 23rd, the Sun and Venus enter your Scorpio third house, showing that there's more focus and growth and creativity happening with like a project, like you're really, really getting on top of your routine and how you're managing your time. And there is a solar eclipse in your third house on the 25th, a huge new beginning that will be catalyzed at the end of this month but last over six months around letting go and clearing out your schedule to envision it in a new way. So it's a huge wipeout but it's a new beginning where you might be like I'm no longer living my life this way, I'm no longer commuting, I'm no longer working from home, I'm no longer doing this, I'm going to build my routine in this way that's a little more creative and is not is more minimalistic. 
On the 28th, Jupiter retrograde re-enters your seventh house. So Jupiter is growth. It was in your seventh house of close relationships from January until May, and it's re-entering to show you that you might be refocusing or re-putting energy back into your one-on-one -on -one committed relationship. Then on the 30th, Mercury enters your third house. There's a lot more writing or getting down to business with being productive and rethinking your career and your routine around it. And on the 30th, Mars is stationing retrograde in your 10th house of career. So this is one of the major transits for the entire entire year, showing that you're rethinking the effort, actions, or I don't want to say destruction, but like choices that you made that were very polarizing in your career, you're now rethinking them or going back to revise and clean some things up. So if you have any thoughts, any predictions, or anything you want to share about what's coming up for you this month, feel free to leave that down below. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. So the tarot card that we have here for Virgo Risings this month is the High Priestess Reversed. The High Priestess is generally like good blessings, spiritual intuition, and with the reverse, this is not a time of like, I'd say sitting back, being passive, receptive, spiritual, zoning out. This is a time of grinding and it makes sense with so much in your financial houses. You're securing the bag, you are going for it, and you're fucking up in real time. You're, you're, your spirit guides are going to have to let you know uh, on the clock, basically. They're not going to like check in with you in like a session laying down. It's very much an active month. I hope that a lot of this is welcome news or fits in with your plans for this October already. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. I see a lot of you have not subscribed yet, and I would love to have you join the, um, I think we agreed on marinara sauce as our name. I don't know. I'm okay with it if you're okay with it. Anyway, take care, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, there is one.